the guys who are out there who are um, being rumored that the Sixers are interested in. Uh, so Zach Lowe said he's heard whispers of Jeremy Grant and Brandon Ingram uh, being rumored to the uh, the Sixers. Uh, Clay Thompson, uh, KCP, and DeMar DeRozan. Um, and obviously Paul George, but no one has any clue how that's going to go, and we'll find it. We'll get more clarity on that within the next 24 to 48 hours on that. So given all these guys who are rumored to be interested in and some of the guys who are on the trade blocks, I developed a graphic here of four different options um, where I'm just curious where you guys would, would, would lean um, as far as what you'd want our roster to kind of look like. Um, and this is obviously already assuming that we will bring back Batum, Ubre and Lowry. So when we look at the graphics of the options, just imagine that we already have Batum, uh, Lowry, and Ubre on the team because that's the the big rumor right now that they are going to be coming back. So all right, go to the graphic here. Um, so with option A, guys, we have Paul George, Malik Beasley, Gary Harris, the, bringing back to Anthony Melton and trading for Dorian Finney-Smith. This is option A. Um, okay, so option B, Brandon Ingram. KCP and Dorian Finney-Smith again. And Dorian Finney-Smith has been a popular guy that's been uh, linked to, as far as uh, trading for since Brooklyn is trying to blow it up right now. Um, and then option C, Jeremy Grant, uh, Miles Bridges, Malik Beasley, Gary Harris, Melton. And then the final option here, option D, DeMar DeRozan, Gary Harris, Danty Melton, Malik Beasley, KCP, and Dorian Finney-Smith. So those are the four options of guys who were kind of uh, rumored uh, the Sixers have interest in and guys who are on the trade block. So all those four scenarios, where are you guys, uh, where do you guys lean on these uh, four scenarios? And, and, and the smaller boxes are one of those guys, correct? Yes. Okay. Just want to make sure. Just one of those guys. Yeah. One of those guys. Um, Oh man, it's kind I, think of I, narr- I think I narrowed it down. And and B is that's Finney Smith. Uh huh. I would say, I I think I've narrowed it down to A or D. Wow, <laughs> mine's a total opposite. I've gone leaning towards B and Z. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Um, and I'm leaning okay. towards D because you're getting four players. Um, yeah, I think these are all kind of give you something, but n- neither of them really pop out above the, the others to me. Um. I don't have one that I feel like I would take this one over these immediately. It was, I I think I can argue for either one of them. Um, except for maybe C. I like, you Um, don't like C. I like C a lot. I, I, I think C is your two main guys are too similar. That's my issue with that. With Grant and, and Bridges. Yes. They're too similar. I don't. I don't know about them playing together. How good it would be is what I'm saying. I like that. I one like them individually. Just, I'm just not. I, I like them better if they were with maybe someone else. All right. So what if I put Clay Thompson there instead? Then I could easily see C being the one. But I still Claire, wouldn't. Claire, then, Claire but, I still, but I still wouldn't see C just popping out. It's like that. I don't. I don't yeah. see. Neither of them. That's why I, I see A and D as probably more immediate right now of trying to make a jump right now. That's why I picked them two, because I think those two out of the four, I feel are the biggest punch to take the biggest leap. Yeah. With Joel and Maxie. Next, I think, you know, next year or the year after. That's I think that this team is the – those two are the, the best to make a immediate jump. I think 
I think the Boston New York route is closer to. Yeah, but the Boston, that's what I'm saying, but the Boston or New York route already had like their best two players. Like, and and then they had sort of, I'm saying they, they had three starters that were part of going to the finals, like three starters. Yeah, yeah, no, no. No, I'm sorry, four starters that was already on that team because Al Horford was a starter. Yeah. Derek White was a starter and, and, and Brown and Tatum were starters. So, I mean, they still yeah. have four starters returning and you're adding pieces. The Knicks technically have four starters and five starters, arguably that's coming back. We got two. So you got yeah. to me, I got to look at it differently. It's not, it's not filling holes. It's filling the roster. Yeah. Well, remember, we this is all assuming Ubre, Lowry, and 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 uh, Batum are back too. Yes, yes. Um, that's that's what I'm saying. These this brings you closer to that. I think Demar and Paul. I'll give you Paul. Those guys being your third option, and then you fill in those other spots, especially with KCP. I think you're in a situation where you and then. Finney Smith fits different roles. You, you're in a situation where you're closer to me to beating the team that won the national check to win the um, NBA championship. Yeah. I think floor spacing. That's tough. I would say. Floor spacing is interesting. Floor spacing with what? I'm trying to compare like the best floor spacing team around these guys. That would probably be maybe C. Because Grant, I didn't know this, and I've been saying it on Twitter all week. He shot like 43% off catch and shoot last year off like five attempts. He shot it well. Really impressive. So you got your spacer there. The reason why I do like the Bridges and him is that Grant, I think, only averaged like three rebounds a game last year. And from 6'8", maybe you're four, that's not going to go down well. We'll get dominated on the boards. Bridges, on the other hand, is very active on the board. So he can compensate that for a little bit, and he can kind of be your slasher type, right? Um, I kind of see that as your, your Aaron Gordon and Porter Jr., uh, Eric, Yeah, between Grant and, and – uh, and bridges, right? And then you get your KCP type in either Beasley, Melton, or Harris. So, which Harris actually was like their KCP before they traded him, right? Before they replaced yeah. him eventually. He was Denver's. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting. Who would you prefer? I think we talked about this last week. I'm not sure. Would you prefer the similar contract they're expected to get would you prefer KCP or Clay? Me? Yeah. Um, I mean, it really depends on what role I'm looking for. Am I looking for just a spot up shooter, or am I looking for someone that's going to give me close to twenty points a night? I would say it depends on the role. Anywhere, anywhere you see KCP in these, would you rather have KCP or Clay in that same lineup? I mean, I would say Clay. Yeah, Clay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Again, I don't think. I think all these lineups, you you are good. I think yeah, they're good teams. They're contending. Yeah. Um, Dude, I mean, that's why I said initially I didn't see anyone that I felt just popped off the screen and I felt like this this letter was so much better than everyone else. I think you'd have the most depth with D. Yeah. And I think B and C you could withstand being without a guy for a little while and you we wouldn't be in trouble. A gives us the most like top end 
but we'd also be in major trouble if someone got injured. Like we'd be we'd be we'd be hurting if someone got injured. Whereas the other ones, I think we could still, you know, manage to keep it together and go like 500 in Joel's absence. Um, but a if Joel got injured and you're looking at just a Maxi and George scoring punch to lead you through the season, I don't know how that would go. Um, whereas, like, let's say Joel got injured with D, right? You still had Maxi, KCP, DeRozan, DFS, and then your backup five. That's still winning some games there. Like, that's still a, that's still a formidable squad, even with like. Yeah, Joel. I mean, that's if if I'm picking one, I'll I'll pick D. If I'm just picking one. Yeah, I like that one. But you ask me tomorrow, I may change. <laughs> yeah, right. Right now, I think I'd go. Oh man, B or C is tough. I'd go. I think I'd go B. And everyone dogs Grant's contract, but I mean, I think it's. I don't think it's a bad contract at all. I mean, he makes twenty nine next year. He is signed for another four years, I believe. But with the way the cap's going to be skyrocketing, that's not going to look like a big number in two or three years from now. Right? I mean, when he's making 34, when the cap's like 170, 180, it's not going to seem like a big deal anymore. So, um, yeah. Anyway, yeah, I think that's, yeah. Well, if yeah. You a great time picking this. What about you, Marcus? I think I'd, I think I'd be fine with any B, D, or C. I think A is the only one I'm like, I, I, I'd be very scared against that. And luckily, that's probably the least, least chances of that happening is Paul George coming to uh, Philadelphia of all these. Um, I think there's a higher chance of these other things happening before Paul George coming to Philly uh, based on reports. Um, but yeah, I probably go with Eric on this one with D I, that, that's just a, that's a, it gives us depth. I mean, and it also, I mean, Maxie at the one DeRozan at the two KCP at the three. And I guess what Dorian Finney's to play four with the uh, NBA at five. Would that, would that be, I and mean, that's a, that's a solid starting five right there. That's a, that, that's a team. I, I that think can, the, the one thing I think is underrated with D is, DeMar DeRozan's ability to close games. Yeah. And then to have Maxi the ability to play off of him and be a more of a catch and shoot player. So I think that's a little underrated. What do you also think about the people saying like they, they they're dying for Butler to come back, but they're so anti DeRozan. I don't think, I mean, they're different players, but I don't see how you can be totally gung ho for, Butler, but be anti DeRozan. I don't think they're that different. I don't, I don't know. I don't understand that conversation. I, I don't know. That's, I think that's just a personal preference. But player scheme fit wise, they're not that far off as far as Philadelphia is concerned, right? Yeah, I mean, they they they're the way they play aren't really the same. I, I just think that you probably view them as far as both one to go one on one and kind of taking mid-range shots as being similar. Yeah. Um, but to me, that's the the only similar thing. But how they go about doing it is different. Um, they both but, go to the free throw line more than, like, any other wing in the league. That's another thing. Too. Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, Jimmy goes on those runs fr- from game to game. You know, I think DeMar can go on those runs in game um, more often. Well, he'll have five points, and all of a sudden he has 25. Mm-hmm. Um, Jimmy will have a run where he's averaging 15, and then all of a sudden he's averaging 25 for five straight games where he takes over in the playoffs. I mean, DeMar's he's done the same thing, so they both had great careers. So um, I think it's just a personal preference if someone chooses one and totally against another. What if they said screw it and they found a way to get like DeMar and Jeremy Grant? What would you say then? I like that. I like it. You know, you had to work the number. You had to work the numbers for me, but you know, I like it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They'd have to work the numbers for me. So yeah, <laughs> Demar would have to work the numbers to, to, to not yeah. take everything he wants. Is what it would have to happen. We'll see. It's gonna be interesting. Jeremy, Jeremy Grant coming back to Philadelphia to complete the process would be amazing. Just uh, yeah. <laughs> the complete three hundred and sixty right there. Right?